Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Valerie Keller. You know, I don't believe there's something called social entrepreneurship. There's only entrepreneurship and the imperative of us putting our work towards changing society. Corporate social purpose is a reality of what we as entrepreneurs must deliver in order for us to have the proper world for our children, for future generations. Purpose sits at the heart of everything we do. Businesses today are the organizations that have that ability to effect the change around us. It's not just about having a purpose. It's how well it's integrated and lived in the day-to-day -day of organizations. It's just good business. Millennials, even Generation Xers and others, they only want to work for companies that have authentic purpose embedded in their DNA. Show me your covenant with customers that doesn't depend on the quarter's numbers, but depends on the long-term investment that you're going to be making. Having quantitative metrics that really make it hard-nosed, specific, and allow you to link environmental or social impact to the growth of the organization is absolutely key. We have a huge responsibility, and it's about time we stepped up to it. We think there's a new idea of what it means to be a business in the world, and maybe an idea whose time has come. Good evening. Well, thank you for that warm welcome. It's so great to be back in Helsinki. Uh, Vilja did a wonderful job on all of your behalf to send lots of notes and emails to say, come, come, et cetera, but it wasn't, it wasn't actually a hard sell because I enjoy being in the land of reindeer and saunas, uh, which is, uh, I was also able to enjoy the, in the last less than 24 hours that I've been here, but also because I know the Finnish people as really being about innovation. Uh, one of my best friends in the world, uh, Anu Bradford, was on your uh, Finnish Innovation Board uh, globally. And uh, we've had many, many conversations also with some of you in the room and some of your global leaders. And I know the Finnish people, I have a, a resonance in some way as people who just get on with things. You are concrete, action-oriented. Uh, you focus more on the talk than the walk. And uh, as someone who, I, I have an American accent, and please don't hold my American accent against me these days. Um, but I originally, although I live in New York, uh, I came originally from the Midwest, the cornfields of Indiana and the bayous of Louisiana, New Orleans area. And these are people who, like, you get on with it. And uh, it's more about what you do and that your actions speak louder than words. And so when I got the, the invitation to come have a conversation around purpose and purpose-driven business with you, I thought, ah, that's the people. Because if they're thinking about this and talking about it, they're going to be doing something as well. And when I talked to Vilja and looked at how you were on this inquiry, this journey, I said, okay, I think there's some value in us spending some time together to look at this globally. I think I can help to bring some experiences and some insights that we're seeing from around the world, but also in a way kind of affirm that you're already on a leading edge of a conversation and an evolution of what does it mean to be a business and what does it mean to be leaders in the world. So in some level, I feel a kinship with you in that way. And then also just as fellow human beings, because <laughs> that's what we all are, and that's the tie that binds us all, is that we're all trying to figure out what does it mean uh, to live uh, a life on the planet, and what does it mean to be leaders of businesses today. So uh, if you will permit me to just spend maybe about 20 minutes with you um, in a conversation, and then we'll also invite uh, one of your own to come up and to have a chat with me then as well. I'm going to ask that you give me, uh, help me help you. I actually don't even speak English. I speak American, Southern American. And I tend to talk really fast when I get really excited. So if I'm talking too fast, would you just wave at me? Because then I'll like stop, I'll be like, oh hi, the Finnish people are so nice, and it'll slow me down, yeah? So if we're doing that as well. So I'd like to share stories with you today. I'm not here to sell you on anything. Uh, this is whatever we're sharing may or may not be interesting and relevant for you. So the invitation is that we're gonna present some stories. I'll share a little bit of my own story. And we'll present some data as well. 
and we'll talk to you again about what does it mean to be on the leading edge of a movement that is transforming what it means to be a human being and what it means to be a business on the planet today. And in some ways, these ideas might seem new or faddish, and in other ways, they're just human beings. It's been with us forever, and so maybe it's just like we said, an idea whose time has come. The movement underway. I'll just take a few seconds to, to give you the, uh, my story there. I, um, I started off as a, a, a very young, a baby CEO of an organization that was purpose-driven at its heart. And the reason why I went there um, and I'll tell you a little bit about the story that may be useful for you as you got onto this, but I had um, an epiphany at some, some young age, and I'm a little slow on things sometimes, um, so you probably came to this realization much earlier in your life, but I realized that I was going to die. And I thought, oh, right. So if we have a limited amount of time to spend in this place and on the planet, what the hell am I going to do with it? And is it just gonna be about getting stuff and more stuff and growth and acquisitions and stuff? Or is it good to be fun and meaningful and fulfilling in that way? And what does that mean? So I went into business that was at its core purpose oriented. And what happened there, my learning there, was that we went through massive growth and massive transformation, complete changes in the business model. We were able to attract and retain talent and get more out of people and new innovations and new markets. And I felt like there was a secret sauce. There was a secret sauce in this idea that it was purposeful, it was meaningful. But this isn't, wasn't a unique idea to me. There's a lot of people who were having these conversations and why. So I went to Oxford University. I ended up going to the, uh, the World Economic Forum and, uh, in Davos, which many of you may have been a part of, and followed this trail of conversations with the executives who were in this question that says, what is going on in the world today? How do we grow? How do we produce? How do we get more? But is it just about more, or is there something more for humanity? And all of this change and all this disruption that we're seeing. And so we went on an inquiry. I ended up, it was a, a random conversation. I was working with global leaders at Oxford University at the Said Business School. I had a small advisory consultancy, and I ran into this guy, Mark Weinberger, who is the chairman and CEO of EY, and he said, what do you do? I said, purpose-driven transformation. This is what we're helping people do. And he said, we're doing that. Come talk to us. And what he meant by we're doing that was that EY had taken on this outrageous promise, that you may call it, this big ambition, this purpose of we're building a better working world. And what I liked about the inquiry there is when I said, okay, well, what does that mean? Right, good, that's a great tagline. Is that on the coffee cups? Is that on your screensavers? And they said, we're not really quite sure. Come help us figure that out. And that honesty and that authentic inquiry is what we heard from others who were there. So we formed Beacon, but we did it like Akoski. We asked the community and we said, what do you need? And people said, we need the stats. We need to understand why this is going on and what it is. We need the stories to know who else is doing what. And we need the safe space to be able to have conversation and share learnings and think about how we live into this. And we crowdsourced the name of Beacon, and we've stood on stage with someone who I appreciate has been out here very recently with you, Sir Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson, the CEO of Unilever, Paul Pullman, Ariana Huffington, who was founded Huffington Post, now the CEO of Thrive Global, the CEOs of Mondelez, and 120 other global executives who got up there on a very cold morning and who said, we stand for this, like there is a movement and that we're a part of it there. So what is that? I'm going to talk to you very briefly. They talk about production and profits, and you see this x-axis here? This is the game that most of us have been playing, even when you think about growth as it means to be a company. And this new dimension around purpose and fulfillment, could you have one dimension means money, and maybe one dimension is meaning, however you want to say it there. But this new dimension is what we're talking about. And the opportunity to be going for a purpose or fulfillment for not just growth for the sake of growth, but that it matters, that it's something is there, there. So if you've seen this, uh, how many people have seen the TED Talk, uh, the Golden Circle, leading from the Y? Let me see hands as well. Okay, so a good, a good bunch of people. And I think it was interesting how that kind of captured a meme, right? That's the idea that says it's not people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And then the interesting thing about that, we started looking and unpacking what is the why, why of why, and you start to say that actually there's something about a bigger ambition 
And how many of you have seen Victor Frankl's man, or read Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning? And another hand, set of hands in there as well. So this isn't a new idea, right? This is an, a human experience that's there. And then we could say that then, what is purpose? What is it? And of course, it's one of those things that's kind of like innovation. The minute you try and define it, it's kind of slippery and slips away at that level. But there is something that says, we would say that it is a, uh, a, an aspirational, maybe reason for being that's grounded in humanity. There's all kinds of words that you could look at for that. But why is it mattering more today? And some research that we did with about 1,500 global executives around the world said that given the state of transformation and all the disruption, everybody talks about the disruption, the technology that is rapidly transforming how we work. Do we even have jobs? What are those jobs? What does it mean for us to grow into new markets? Who's disrupting us? Who's moving into our industry? Our industry is completely transforming in a new way. And the business leaders in the space of that says that, that all that disruption is driving a profound rethink of their corporate purpose. And that having a purpose, and not just any purpose, we'll talk about that in a minute, but a well-integrated, a lived one is helping to navigate the disrupted environment. So thinking about purpose not as a tagline or some draw some circles, fill in a why. There is something about says what gets you out of bed in the morning, absolutely. What makes you feel good when you go to sleep at night? But there's something also about saying what's the compass and the North Star that helps make sense of all this crazy disruption and all the digital space that's around us today. But not all purpose is created equal. And so we found when we went onto this question that people would say, yes, business should have a purpose. The purpose is to make profits for shareholders in the shortest amount of time. Well, yes, that was a, that's been a one definition of a business's purpose. And what's interesting is we, the first time that we went out with a survey, we did a research with Harvard Business Review, and we gave a definition of purpose, and then we asked businesses about it. We said this aspirational reason for being, it's grounded in humanity, something that kind of people could fit into that was based on science. This time we asked them. We said, where is your purpose in that way? This is most of, more than 1,500 global executives from around the world of your peers. And the interesting thing is this notion of not purpose with a small p, of profits or that kind of one dimension of productivity, but this larger sense of care, like who do you care for? Is it big enough, right? The idea of an outrageous promise, but maybe that outrageous promise is focused on kind of the humans that you interact with. And the notion really of the organization as comprised of organisms, that we're here to kind of as leaders be able to create a meaningful sense of we around them as well. The interesting thing about this and this notion of kind of capital P purpose, right, which is the kind of purpose that gets you out of bed and that mobilizes people through change and disruption the interesting thing about this is that we asked people where they were going, and the direction of travel was very clear. More than 50% of the global leaders that we surveyed said that they were moving to this definition of capital P purpose. So this notion of purpose fueling growth, and let's talk just for a few minutes and very quickly about why this matters, because the business case is important, right? Now, I'll talk to your head, but listen from it from here as well. You saw Murad. He was our World Entrepreneur of the Year winner at Monaco, which is very important to remember that the World Entrepreneur of the Year is usually measured by growth statistics like this. When they started in 2013, they are now at today's markets and they're a provider of lentils and beans. They're one of the world, they're out the world's largest vertically integrated lentils, legumes, chickpeas, peas. And Murad will say that his growth globally was powered fully by signing up and saying, we want to bring protein to the world. That's what we're doing. That's the game that we're playing. Come be a part of that if that's what you want to do. Canadian entrepreneur. And the data is there to support it. I'm not going to go into all of this. The point here is that the data is there. You can go check it on our website from Beacon. You can check it out from a myriad of different sources. Part of what we've been doing is helping aggregate the business case for purpose. But the expansion, if you're thinking about how do you grow and where do you grow, and the important thing there, of course, is that it means different things in different markets. And maybe in a Finnish environment where the government often provides for a lot of the education and the social welfare and the role of business might be very different. In other other markets, both developed and developing, the role and expectation of business is quite different, so the benefits can also be quite different 
or the penalties can be there as well. But this is what we heard and what we said from a global executive, help to expand, to be part of acquisitions. Align 17, you might have seen Georgie uh, Bernadetta in our, in our video as well. So she's a serial entrepreneur who most recently has launched an institutional investor tech platform, which is helping align institutional investors, I think they did it in partnership with UBS, with businesses that are aligning to the sustainable development goals, the global goals to the UN which is a lot of problems and challenges facing our world today. But the fact that we as humanity have taken on saying we're going to provide, we're going to end poverty, we're going to help solve our water issues and our climate issues, and actually there's a business imperative to do it, and the, the matching of the capital to the need, the what are the problems that these businesses are solving, and that the investors, the institutional community is there to be out to line up to it. The idea of talent has been talked about a lot. Millennials, all of this, right? The idea that you want to grow with customers and shareholders. This is James Nwangi, went from an underwater microfinance firm to 10 million accounts. And the idea that purpose is linked to innovation and transformation. So a lot has been made about the millennials, want this, et cetera. I would say that the business case for an executive is about this ability to innovate and to transform in times of disruption. And the thing that I appreciate about Dr. Andrew Cooper, who was our World Entrepreneur of the Year in Australia, is that when he launched his investment firm, he launched it, and I use the term that you've used, that Koski used, but I love the outrageous promise. He said, we want to do, we want to help bring jobs to the world, and we want to reach 25 million customers with financial access and increasing and building other, other businesses, and 50,000 jobs in 10 years. And the reality of that is, look at those numbers, 111 million customers and 115,000 jobs that they've been enabling. And there was something about the how there. He didn't just say, we're gonna be good for the world in that way, and we put it on our website. He set a big goal, and it was X by Y. What are we gonna do? And that's what leaders do. We do set the goals in the same. But moving from beyond rhetoric to reality, and I think this is the part that I was going back to when I was opening that was so intriguing to me about the Finnish people and that what we're doing is that a lot of companies have been actually doing things and it isn't about talking pur purpose puffy statements, it's all purpose pink puffiness, et cetera, but actually moving from beyond rhetoric to reality. And the reason why that's important is because our research shows and common sense would support that if you go for something a big purpose, and you don't align what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, if your employees show up and they're like, yeah, okay, we say that we're going for this outrageous promise, but actually, pretty sure we're just trying to maximize value for the owners, or pretty sure we're not, and, and the customers will feel it too, et cetera. So there's a penalty here. And I think that's important to understand the risk, is that some of these companies who are like, woo, we're purpose-driven, we've got this cool statement, it's something about better and worldness and people, and that's good, and we've kind of rolled it out, but if they haven't integrated it, there's actually a penalty, right? And it makes sense in that way. The other thing that I would suggest to us is that we also see is that people have an expectation of companies, whether you know it or not. And so there is a little bit of a, uh-huh, whether it's talent, customers, not so much the investors just yet, but as you've seen, there's been a lot that are aligning up to it who are driving this that say, we have an expectation of that and we'll recognize and reward those who do and there's penalties if you don't. So if purpose is so great and so good, why don't we all just do it in our businesses? I think it's interesting there, if you think about the how, from rhetoric to reality, to look at the barriers. What stops us? <laughs> what stops us? And I think it's a human thing, right? I, I get up in the morning and I say, I am never eating chocolate again. I put on so much weight and I'm, and then by 10 o'clock I've had a Kit Kat bar, whatever your version of that here is. That's just a human thing. So there is this idea that says, this is what leaders are telling us, short-term financial pressures. The idea of about leadership, I was having a conversation with your other speakers tonight, which by the way, you're in for a real treat, the rest of this uh, summit. But we were talking about actually, there's something that's gotta be here. There's a lot of other things that one can sign up to say, we are this. At some level, if it's not here, if it's not an expression of you getting up and saying, I want to make it matter, and we can make it matter, and we can create a collective we, that we're safe together, we're trusted together, we're going to go for this big goal, whatever that is. If it's not here, it won't work. So my other invitation to you is to say, take the opportunity to live your purpose through your work. But if it's not true for you, you're better off not. And then the idea of KPIs. 
we measure what we treasure, right? So if we're measuring only on the dimension of productivity and profits, are we measuring for? And there's a lot of innovations here in terms of companies looking at net promoter score or your employees or, you know, if you were to shake somebody in bed and say, quick, why does your company do what it does? Is it aligned to that? Would they recommend their family member? Do they feel safe? There's a lot of different ways that companies are experimenting with these metrics around it today. The bottom line is a question that says just, let's not overcomplicate it. I mean, I could spend another couple hours in conversation around how companies really look at saying, we take a stand, we say it's authentic to us, it looks at our legacy and our history, and we'll talk about that in a minute with one company who's done that. You think about well, how do you align your business to it and the day-to-day -day decisions, the pop basic question is just how do you spend your time and your money? Because that's basically, you know, <laughs> what we have. And so if you're making your decisions, and it's like a strategy of any kind of strategy of how do you deploy that. So you've already been some on this journey, right? And I thought that was so intriguing when Vilya reached out to me to say, and by the way, I love this. This is not a stock photo. Does anybody recognize your head in here? Or your friend's heads? <laughs> You've got great heads. This is you guys here. This was in conversation you were having around your purpose, who you are, what you stand for, which was the beginning of a conversation that was like, okay, as a business, why are we here? Why do we want to be here? We get to make that up. And you have one of those businesses who's here with us today. I'm gonna to invite to join me in a conversation up on the stage, Teresa Kempe Boston. I'm just butchering your name, I'm sure of that. <laughs> Please, can you help me give a warm welcome to her as she comes up as well. Hi, Teresa, thank you so much for joining Hi, us. Yeah, here, I'll thank give you. that to you. So let's have a conversation. We had an amazing conversation over reindeer last night as well. Um, but Teresa, you kind of came into this organization recently. You had a very interesting background, right? But you came in as a social psychologist who had been running businesses elsewhere, and you come into a B2B industrial organization. And a lot of conversations sometimes we have in companies that are kind of mid-sized, they were based on products and services that might be B2B, say, oh, does purpose really matter? Or is it only about the employees, et cetera? So I'm really interested in the question about why you started to look at the why. And then we'll talk a little bit about the how, and maybe what you would learn from that. But just your, your perspectives coming in as a leader, right, to help this organization with the time that you have. What, what was your experience there? Well, uh, <clears throat> of course, I was born into the Kempe family, so I've been there forever, if you can yeah. say that. But um, actually, working for the company, that's only happened for the last 10 years. And that's true. I did other things first. So I, um, I'm a social psychologist, of course, and used to have a very, I would say, people view on things. Mm -hmm. And then I also used to work for the Red Cross for 11 years. So, of course, that's, I think, one of the organizations that really has a great purpose. Mm -hmm. And I did see how purpose really hmm. changes things. So, of course, that was something that I was used to. And then I, well, 10 years ago, I started in the family company, and finally. I think mm -hmm. family probably thought, <laughs> finally. And, um, and this was never discussed, to be honest, really. And um, I joined Kasvorufima. And, um, well, I think two years ago, we started really to discuss the purpose. And I thought, hey, this resonates somehow to me, and I think this could be useful also for us. So that's, I think, how it really started. Then. Interesting. So then a question of how would it be useful for you? And then let's talk a little bit about the process that you went through. So if somebody is like, OK, we haven't thought about this for a while. We've gotten to a certain state in our evolution and development. And maybe it would be useful to take a stand, to think about who we are, how we want to be with each other. What were you kind of hoping would happen as a result? And then how did you kind of take the, the organization on the journey that you've been to this far? Because I appreciate you're early in your journey. Yeah, yeah well, I'll tell you a little bit about the process first, and yeah. then, of course, um, some of the feelings and hopes that I have, obviously. Of course, I came back from Gasforifma, back to the factory in Lahti, and had this idea that, hey, let's make a purpose for the company. And uh, you can imagine what most of the people thought. It was, of course, they looked at me and said, oh, great, the chairman has been to one of these seminars once again. <laughs> and, she drank uh, the purpose Kool-Aid. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, we, we had the mission, we had the vision. And, of course, that's what most people have been trained to make. So they kind of... Uh, we're kind of wondering, why do we need a purpose statement? Because kind of the vision it's worked tells so about far, the future. Yeah, right? exactly. It really tells well. you about the future. Yeah. The mission kind of tells you about the existence of the company in a way, anyway. And uh, but 
anyway, it didn't stop me. We, we started to discuss it, and uh, I was lucky, of course, that the former CEO also thought it was a good idea. So we started to discuss this first in smaller groups. Hmm. And I think the discussion went in a few steps, actually. Um, the first discussion was very much about um, the history of Campy. You know, what have we really been good at? What have we really achieved? Hmm. What is in our DNA? What and was in your DNA? Well, I, mean, I would say we have a pioneering DNA in many senses. We brought a lot of new innovations to the world, and of course, that was something very much in us. And that's something, in, it's not always wise to be the first one, mm. business-wise, I mean, but it's something that makes us tick, and I, that was very important for us. So it's not but just any purpose. You can't say these words, wait, well, it has to be authentic to you and has, who you yeah, are. And we and really enjoy it, so that's, it makes fun, and I, I think our customers also appreci appreciated having all these new innovations in yeah. their hands at yeah. the end of the day. But then, of course, we did d continue the discussions. Um, there was a lot of discussion about, you know, what the welding world is really going to, and what it's developing into, what our customers really, what kind of problems they really have. And if you really look at their problems, it's a lot about, um, of course, it's always productivity issues. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of quality issues. Uh, it's really tough to find qualified welders, uh, so you have to look at automated solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, um, you have to make equipment that are easier to use than they used to be. Uh, then if you look at all the accidents that happened around the world, I think everybody here knows the Mexican Gulf uh, rig mm -hmm. burning, you can see it in front of your eyes, or anyone actually sitting up there, you appreciate that the steel structures hold, uh, right. definitely. <laughs> so if you look at from that point of view, it, it's become when there is a lack of welders and um, and also, uh, all the materials they weld are more difficult. So th there have been more and more quality issues around, and there are more um, different kind of um, um, restrictions to mm. what you can do and what you can't do. And you really have to follow the norms. So that's, and you have to document a lot of more things. And mm. when we started to look at all these things and, and thought about, you know, how did we try to solve this kind of issues? Uh, we realized that actually what we do in the equipment side mm -hmm. is, of course, a lot to do with the fact that we, we would try to make, of course, advanced high-end machines that really work in difficult situations when you really have to have a challenging welding right. job. And it has to be easy to use because not everybody is able to use them. But then at the same time, you also realize that you have to document it all. You have to really follow the norms. You have mm -hmm. to understand the welding procedures. You really have to... Um, you, you need a lot of software right. in, in order to really do that. And that's why we've also moved into the software business. Right. And I think that was one of the things that I, I realized when we started to t you know, talk about the purpose, that um, how, how do I explain to the organization why do we do both equipment and software and right. services? And someone, when we came up with the purpose, we kind of understood that, hey, this kind of brings it together. And I'll show you now the purpose statement, actually. Maybe this one. So this is actually the statement we then um, identified, if you could say it that way. Um, so we enable the building of safe infrastructure around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look about the word safe, we realize that we're in a way, we're in the safe safety business, if you can say that, mm -hmm. because uh, both the equipment and the software really try to make the welding better, right. more productive, uh, the quality much better, and it has a lot to do with the safety issues that right. we all experience also in this hall. So, you know, if I could just recap what I'm saying, a lot of companies are saying we're going digital now. So we started off in a we're welding in that space, that's what we do, and then you've got the same time, the world is moving to automation and software, and so in some ways, we were talking about this over dinner last night, you were already doing a lot of these activities, this kind of how do we go into automation and services while bringing an organization that's around the stuff and how we make that together. And I loved how you said we bring it together, right? We, we combine in this way, and that creating this kind of, you know, a who are we now? What are we up to now? You in some way put a, um, a, a context around what you were already doing in some ways to help it make sense, to help you navigate through. Yeah, Am I putting words yeah. in your mouth? Or is that well, yeah, in a way, similar? yes, um, yeah, it's good. true. Sorry, we did. don't <laughs> let me do that. <laughs> but that's true, that, that's exactly what happened. We did have a strategy, so it did work that way, that we would have a purpose statement first, and then we would create a strategy. I think that's what the literature often tells you, that you're supposed to have a great purpose, and then you align your strategy. I don't know, but the I reason we did why it. we're asking this yeah. is because actually there's no one right path, and I think a lot of leaders are doing what you're doing. Right, which is mm -hmm. saying, you know, we need to kind of look at what we're doing and make sense of that in mm -hmm. a way. 
Yeah, I think that what happened. And of course, if you also look at the purpose of the company, I think it's, it varies. If it was diff probably very different from my grandfather when he founded the company. Right. He did it after the war, and there was a lot of need for everything. So of course, he needed to have a living for the family. Right. But now we live in a different environment, a different kind of world, and the, and the customers have huge demands. And so it's. I think the purpose has changed in yeah. many ways. It's interesting because, you know, I think that's exactly right. This is like an evolution of what does it mean to be a business. This is a new pioneer, like you said, this kind of new frontier in that way. And that many businesses were founded because I want to provide for family or for Finland, right, a country in that way. But as we're thinking about kind of this global world that we're in and that the borders of an organization are now porous, the borders of, co borders of countries, as we well know, are as well, and we're wanting to grow globally, that there is this kind of new frontier But what does it mean to be a business, but it is a, an old one as well. There is still something about providing for, you know, a we in that way, what your father did, or your grandfather. Grandfather, right? yeah. 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 And and now the boundaries of that, the expansion of that have yeah, gone now, as now well. Now it's a global mission, yeah. definitely. What were your learnings? What was it, something that you wish you would have done differently if you were sitting in the seats out here in this space? Yeah. Um, well, I'm happy with the outcome of it, but uh, to be honest, I think we should discuss it more thoroughly. We do try to discuss it, of course, all the time. And um, actually, I'll show you one picture uh, sure. just quickly. Uh, this is our strategy picture. And you can see on top of it, actually, you can see like the orange sun. It actually says the, the purpose statement. And this is one of the pictures that we use for um, communicating, or actually discussing our strategy. It doesn't, as, as a picture, tell the strategy, but it, it has elements of it. Hmm. And the idea is really that uh, teams and uh, different functions or, or parts of the organization really discuss the different elements. And we do mm. different kind of video blogs in our internet. And actually, I intend to have the next one together with our CEO. And actually, I, I would like to talk about the purpose and the mm. values as well, just to you know, bring it again closer somehow to the whole big picture that, and the life that we're living within yeah. the company. Teresa, that seems like a natural evolution. A lot of times it'll start with the leadership kind of coming in, and that's one of the learnings as well, is you need tone from the top. But then it's a, how do you make it real for people at the bottom? And if you look at the other companies who have embedded this in that way, it has to move beyond um, PR, public relations, which is, of course, mm -hmm. this is an internal motive for you. It has to move beyond CR or corporate responsibility. And it's not HR as well. So the domain of this really is in the leadership of the company and the legacy of it. And it's interesting to think about family generation companies and the mid-market companies, because actually, I think you have it easier in some respects. A lot of times we hear companies that are publicly traded, and I showed you a lot of examples of publicly traded companies and the stories that we were saying who have grown in that way. But you've got something you can get your arms around in terms of size, in terms of impact. You can bring people on that journey with you to align the metrics of the organization, the measure what matters, measure what we treasure in that way, and to think about aligning your strategy so that in your, when you're making decisions, right, about how you allocate capital, how do you spend time, what do you do, you're doing it through this lens. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would like to say to be complete in terms of your either next steps or learnings that you wanted to share? Well, I think um, it's definitely worth making a purpose uh, for the company. I, I, that's what I learned, I think. And um, if you start to think of uh, the time that all of us spend at workplaces, um, it's 8, 10, 12 hours, who knows who, who, how many hours actually people spend there. It's even more sometimes that you do with, spend you, with your kids during oh the week. So I think it's really uh, worth having a greater purpose for every company. So um, I would enc encourage everyone to take this path, definitely. Yeah. That's my dream, too, Teresa, <laughs> to live a life with meaning and purpose and to enable other people to do it. That's why I'm here with you. And also, I think the other invitation that I would have for us and, uh, is that we invited Teresa to come and have a conversation, but also as an illustration that says we've got a lot to learn from each other in that way. I'm excited to be on your journey. EY is, as you think about expanding into other global markets, think about the Entrepreneur of the Year program. We can connect you up with other purpose-driven entrepreneurs. We can help you in that kind of cross-pollination of learnings and say, how do you move from rhetoric to reality? How do you make it real? Because the journey is not easy. If it was, everybody would be doing this. Um, so th there's a reason why it takes courageous leadership 
um, right now because in many cases things aren't fit for purpose in this broader way. Um, but that's the task of leaders anyway, right? Is to help to set this outrageous promise and to bring people along on that, to create that shared sense of, of we on that. So look around the room. You're an amazing we. This is an incredible community. And I know you're going to have a, a great next couple of hours and uh, to tomorrow then as well. Um, but we're excited to be with you on the journey. I want to thank you, Teresa, for thank giving you. your time, being willing to stand up here. It's not easy to say, well, we tried it, and we're not quite there, but we're on a journey. And that is also, I think, important for, for all of us in that way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for giving your time and your attention. We look forward to being with you next on the journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Teresa.